Hey guys, it's Tyler here from Camera Center UK and today we're going to do a photography 101 on how to take the perfect portrait. We've got a little studio set up here and we're also going to be going out on location to show you guys how to take the perfect portrait with the correct equipment. So follow us through. So we're here with MK Models and Martin. How's it going, man? It's going really good, thank you very much. So what do you do then? So I'm a model agent scout uh, here at Cardiff, here in Wales. I am key models, model agency. And yeah, I just basically, yeah, work with different models, creatives, all different people, book them jobs and get them seen and noticed. How do I work with models? So here's a technique for you. Every time your flash fires, the model changes the pose. So we're going to demonstrate this now. Have a watch. I'm going to fire the flash. When the flash fires, change your pose, okay? Yeah. Again. Set. Good. Brilliant. It's a really simple way of getting five or six different poses in the space of 20 to 30 seconds. So we're actually using a 50 millimeter 1.8 Econ Z lens. I'm actually also using the Godax system, which is my favorite system to shoot with. This is the X-T2 trigger. We've actually got Godax, a flash gun, you can see up here as well. It's a flash gun mounted into a Bowens S-mount adapter, which is then attached to this softbox here. It makes a much more affordable and cheaper way to use studio lighting. So if you can't spend a huge amount of money on actual studio lights, you've got flash guns already. You can buy triggers that go with your flash guns and you can mount them into Bowens S-mount adapters. Most studio lights or studio softboxes will fit a Bowens S-mount. So they're really handy and really, really cheap. So we're actually shooting at one two hundredth of a second. I'm actually shooting at F5. I'm also shooting at ISO 100 just to get some nice balanced level of light. Of course, we're not going to get much in the way of depth of field because we've got a background quite close to the model here, but we can sort of add in some depth of field effects later on if we want to, just by positioning the model a little bit further Ooh, closer wonderful. to the camera. So now we're going to shoot with the 85mm f1.8 Nikon Z mount. This is my absolute favorite go-to lens of choice when it comes to shooting portraits, whether it's studio or on location. We're going to shoot it in a way that allows you to get depth of field in a studio environment by placing the model further away from the background and shooting down at a wider aperture. Plus at 85mm, you get that nice compression. Two, one, go. So with the triggers, sometimes people can be really intimidated by triggers and they actually look more complicated than they are. Essentially, it just allows you to remotely activate your flash from your camera. You can actually also on these ones, particularly with the Godox X-T2, if I light it up, you can actually change the power output of your flash without having to go over to the flash. So you can change it remotely from the camera. So if I feel that the, the light is too bright, like for example, in a shot that we just took just now, which is this one, it's a little too bright for my liking. I want to tone it down a bit so I can change the power and then remotely do it from the camera. So it's a lot easier that way. Triggers are actually really easy and simple. They just look more intimidating than they are because you can also set it to TTR, which is automatic flash. You can do manual, you can do all of that kind of stuff. It's a lot easier than people realize it is. So definitely buy one. So now we're on the 35mm, which is going to be a bit wider. So where 50mm is more human eye level, 35 gives you a bit more of a wider perspective. Really great for shooting sort of half body portraits or full body portraits. Just gives you a much nicer, more flattering wide angle shot. So again, it keeps you down to f1.8 because it's a prime lens. And remember, go back to my prime video. You'll hear all about those. This will give you a lot more flexibility in the types of portraits that you can shoot in studio and on locations. So we're actually out now as well, photographing in natural light it's to show you how you can balance natural light with studio light and combine the two. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially if I'm shooting like nice business portraits or I'm shooting something for a model or a portfolio or any kind of portrait whatsoever. You can do natural light plus studio or strobe light type photography as well. So check them out. So one thing to be really conscious of when you're shooting in natural light environments is the light doesn't stay consistent in the same all the time. You'll find that, especially on a cloudy day, I mean, today is overcast hell, there is not a sun in the sky at all. Um, but you'll find that when that's when the clouds go behind the sun, it actually dims the light a lot. You can't see it really a lot with the human eye. Um, you can if you know what you're looking for, but down a camera, it changes your exposure. You're constantly fighting against the elements all the time. So you're either bringing that ISO up and down, changing the studio light, changing your shutter speed aperture, you're constantly fighting with things. So it's important to remember that and just learn the exposure triangle. If you check out Stu's video, that's what I'll plug in for Stu. Um, <laughs> Uh, he teaches you about the exposure triangle and how to change shutter speed, aperture and ISO accordingly. That's a really good reference video for what I'm on about here.
Okay, so for this bit, we're gonna show you how to photograph backlighting using a studio light on location. It's a really good technique to get nice harsh lighting behind the subject, but also to create definition in a portrait as well. You can do it with one light. Some people prefer to do it with two lights. You can do it with three, but using just one light creates a nice dynamic type shot where you can use black and white photographs or you can do them in complete color. It's up to you, but you'll see the results. They're good. As you can see, I'm carrying two cameras, one with a 50mm, one with the 85 so I can rotate between the two. We're using completely natural light, but we are indoors, so the lights are quite dim. So I'm really pushing up that f1.8. My ISO 1000, my shutter is sitting at 1 200th of a second, which I'm more than comfortable shooting. I can bump the ISO up a little bit if I want to and go up for a higher shutter speed. But we're using the backlights here, blurring them out to create nice depth of fields, nice pixelation in the background and using the skylights as a nice natural light source just to create something a bit more different to what we shot earlier on. With this as well, with the 85, again, we're getting that compression. I keep going on about compression because it's really important. That creates a real nice frame for the model as well. So, have a look. So we're using a lot of the background light to really create depth in the photograph. So we haven't got a lot going on in the model's face, but by creating a really good background, you can create some really good solid portraits. I'm rotating between the 50 and the 85. So you can see this background with the shop sign or the restaurant sign at the background here. Um, that will completely blur out and create nice color and depth. So it's often wise to look for things in a way in which the photograph's gonna turn out rather than how you see them with your own eyes. Um, and try and find light in really unusual areas is my biggest, biggest tip. Anytime that I'm photographing on location, I'm looking for the small areas of detail in lighting. And then I put the model in front of that. That's the easiest way. So guys, if you really enjoyed this 101 video, it was basically on how to take the perfect portrait for whatever you're doing. So we went through studio lighting with a one-point light setup. Of course, we are gonna go through more things like two-point light setup, setups, three-point light setups in the future. So tune back in for those. We also went through using and applying studio light on location as well. That's a really, really, really good technique. It's something I use all the time. It'll be really useful for you. And it's something brilliant for you to master. Stuff that eventually over time, you're gonna learn to do, to do really, really well. It's something that I've been specializing in and focusing on for the last 13 odd years that I've been shooting. So if you really, really like this video, like and subscribe, comment and watch all of our other stuff. And uh, I'm more fabulous. Let's do it. Thank you.